How y'all doing? I'm Charlie Agar with Charlie B Company. I'm here to do a bee removal for you. Walk you through some of the steps about how I do it and uh, show you how to go get some bees for free. Um, unfortunately, there are no free bees. <laughs> it takes a lot of work, uh, a lot of effort. But what we're gonna do today is a small hive removal. I classify it much like a water meter. Um, these bees are in a pot. Uh, that's overturned in a garden. It's got a hole in the side. Perfect, almost like a skep back in the day when beekeepers used to work, use those up, overturned skeps. The bees have filled in. The family and their neighbors, they're all gardeners. We're here in downtown New Braunfels. They, they love the bees. They saw them move in and they said, oh, it's exciting, we have bees, but what happened? These are feral bees in Central Texas, and so they're hybrid, Africanized, feral, or they're just bee and bees, and they defended their territory. So the neighbor's dog got stung, and so they're concerned. So they call me, and the good thing is they, they're looking for someone who's not gonna kill the bees. Um, this is a relatively easy removal. If you are going down the crazy road of becoming a removal guy like me, don't do it. Um, this is a good place to start water meters, uh, a job like this, I could even take this pot and net the whole thing and take it away. That would be an easy way to do it. But here we're gonna get in there, we're gonna uh, uh, smoke the bees, not smoke them too much because we're gonna be looking for the queen. I always carry my queen catcher, so I just have a, a, a marking tube. Um, that's the easy way to catch her for me. Um, I've got a hive tool. So I'm gonna be using this to scrape the comb out. I've got a bucket, I run a vacuum. Um, all kinds of opinions run wild about vacuuming, not vacuuming. I love my vacuum. Uh, it just saves so much time and energy. And uh, we'll, be taking the, we'll be taking those good brood frames um, and, and installing them. So let's get after it. Ooh, beautiful. It's a beautiful hive. Look at that. So I'm going to uh, start the vac. So I keep my queen catcher at the ready, always looking for the queen as I go. I take the stopper out so that if I find her, I can just drop her right in there. They were just about at capacity here too. Yeah, I mean, they can't get any bigger, right? This little honey. Oh, wow. Pretty good. I'm gonna throw it right in here. Yeah, go for it. Wow, I think they just swarmed. I'll show you that when we get there. So these bees have been really gentle. Really, the beginning of any removal, I'm just knocking numbers down. I'm removing those guard bees, uh, the flyers, the bees that kind of come rushing out. These bees have been very gentle and not, not aggressive whatsoever. They are also upside down. <laughs> so that'll, that'll teach them. Uh, here they're balling up on the outside. That makes it easy to get them. I'm looking for that queen as I go. Always looking for the queen. I just love getting to observe these hives up close. Uh, to take apart a wild hive, you really get to see how they build and uh, learn so much. And it just amazes me every time I get into a hive. Still working without a veil. These bees are not aggressive whatsoever. They are still bees though, and they can sting. So uh, like I said, I do this to show off, but uh, always urge caution going gloveless or without a veil. Um, now it's just down to one bee at a time here. I'm removing bees from the outside. 
Um, we get to a certain point where I call it kind of the law of diminishing returns of uh, removing bees when I'm catching them out of the air one at a time. Uh, it might be time to pause and call it quits. So here I found a queen cup. Not a queen cell though. I'm wondering if these bees have actually swarmed or are uh, laying worker. Spend a lot of time just vacuuming up bees. It's a little bit tedious, but the more bees I get, the better chance they have of uh, getting settled in. Here's a nice frame. I'm not seeing any brood here though. I'm seeing a little honey in the bottom and open brood and a little bit of uh, capped brood. So I'm not sure what's going on with these bees. There are a lot of drones too. Got to be careful not to vacuum up honey. That will clog up the vacuum. So I'm, I'm cautious about sticking that nozzle into the honey. It makes a real mess. But it's just a cleanup operation at this point. Uh, I usually like to have the queen at this point because then I can really scrape and just get her done. But here we have not yet found the queen. So I'm just carefully vacuuming, looking for the queen. The bees will ball up in different spots. Um, now I'm seeing there's not any bees down in the bottom, so I can give it a good scrape and get it all cleaned out. I will leave uh, the, the comb in the bottom, a little bit of comb. The bees will clean it out themselves. Also get a lot of robber bees. So bees will come from other hives to clean up after the removal. And uh, I usually leave hives open after a removal and let the router bees do the, do the work for me. I do try to get as much comb off as I can get them. And here they are balled up on the ground right nearby the hive, where, near their entrance, near where they were. So these are foragers coming back with pollen and they're a little confused. Their GPS tells them this is where they need to be. And so being that it's the middle of the day, unfortunately there's going to be a lot of workers left over. So call it quits. I've had I've got enough bees, I think I've got them, uh, get all my tools and uh, right. get ready to rehome these bees. Take this wax and comb out to feed them and uh, got to make sure the bees stay cool in the back. I keep the back running, close the entrance, then turn it off and this, this top here, I remove the top, gives them a little bit of ventilation. But I definitely got to make sure the bees stay nice and cool. Uh, don't leave them in the sun. Um, I typically let them ride in the vehicle with me and keep them out of bright sunlight and in the AC as I drive. I do put my smoker in a trash can, which works great. And then I can ride with it in the car. Beautiful little hive. I love to be able to get that close. I took my veil off mostly to show off. <laughs> but and I don't recommend doing that but I could tell they were pretty gentle I really could have scooped bees into a box but luckily I had the vac with me I just vacuumed up a lot of bees um, we found a really unique situation so this hive from what I could tell was queenless not because I couldn't find the queen I mean I I didn't see any evidence of the queen I didn't see eggs larva uh, I saw a lot of drones I, don't, I didn't see a pattern for a laying worker, which is those pencil nubs sticking up, and that's a doomed hive. But I think what might have happened, I'm gonna guess at it, I saw some uh, emerged queen cells, some broken open queen cells. I think they swarmed. New queen emerged, killed her sisters like she does, went on her mating flight, and got, ate by, got killed by a bird or something like that. Like I have no idea because this hive was, uh, they were backfilling with nectar. We're in the fall flow right now. And so they were backfilling those, the brood area with nectar, but it was all empty. Um, so they were easy to work with. Um, but the cool thing is, not only did these folks save their garden bees, but their garden bees probably wouldn't have made it without our intervention today. So I'll probably take these bees use the paper marriage, the newspaper marriage, combine them with another hive that's queen right, but with low numbers, and I have a number of those, and then make them strong. So um, yeah, kind of a double win today. But from here, let's head out to the bee yard.
All right, so we're out in the bee yard. This is what I used to call the dark yard. Now I call it the bee hab. This is way out in the back of beyond, away from a lot of folks. I know I can bring my feral colonies out here. They're not gonna bother anybody. They're not gonna be a danger to anybody. I can hive them up, see how they behave, and see if I can keep that queen, get a new queen. We've got a weird situation. We don't know if we have the queen. So, uh, but I'll show you how I make it darn right hospitable for these bees. Um, first thing I got, well, I have a screen bottom board. I don't usually use screen bottom boards, but it's what I have right now. Um, if you've got drawn out comb, so if you take a look at this, this is some older, so maybe a hive that failed. This is some dark drawn out comb. Um, that is money. We're trying to make this a place that the bees really want to hang around. So um, drawn out comb, one, two, I've got a bunch of it right now, three, four frames, four frames of drawn out comb. Now, they just came from their hive. They're in this canister. They've been through horrible experience. So uh, we need to give them some of their home back too. So I like to give them some brood. Now again, here's a bunch of drone cells and it's just full of nectar. So I was thinking on the way over here as I drove, maybe, you know, maybe the, there's a, a virgin queen or recently uh, a queen that just came back and she hasn't started laying yet. So I'm excited to see if in fact we got the, the queen in the vac. But we're gonna try to find a, a few frames of at least open cells of their own that will smell like their colony. And that'll help them to get established. Yeah, see there's really, oh, there's bees emerging. Right there, there's a, there's a bee emerging. Ah, just emerged. Um, but that's from old, older brood. You see where they're back filling. So this is kind of a conundrum to me, but I'm going to use that frame and one other. I used to, um, I used to give the bees like a whole box of comb. If I do a great big removal, I give them like a whole box of comb from their hive. I really not, not being lazy. I just think they need a little bit to get started. And so I'll take this frame. This has already has some old comb in it, so I'm gonna cut that off. And then we're just gonna size it up. I don't even use rubber bands anymore. Um, I just wedge it in. It just seems to work. So here I got it pushed up against there. Honey's on the top, so that this always net honey on the top, so the cells will slant. Cells will slant down, right? And uh, have that good orientation and then I'm just gonna cut I just cut it a little bit a little bit bigger and then I wedge it in and again there's no there's no brood here which is a bummer but uh, it, it's at least gonna smell something like their hive and they've got a little honey at the top so that's gonna help to sort of glue it they'll clean all this up it'll give them something to clean up there's one. I'm gonna try to put those right in the middle. One. And here's do one more. I'm gonna cut a little of this honey off. And this is good old hard comb. Sometimes with the soft younger hives, you gotta watch, it's so brittle. It'll just kind of fall apart in your hands, but that'll give them something to think about. Last thing I'll do is give them some food. Now, all this comb, all this comb I put out as there's a fair bit of honey in here. I let the bees pick on it for a little bit. Now, why do I not want to leave it out forever? Small hive beetle, wax moth. So comb is uh, valuable to the degree that it's not, not infested with uh, pests. So I'm gonna let the bees clean it, then I'll throw it in a solar wax melter or throw it away if it's just old dark comb slum gum. Uh, but I'm looking to extract some of the wax out of that. So I end up doing removals, tons of wax. 
So, uh, feeder. I like the in-hive, the pro feeders, anything that's inside the hive. I'll, I'll, I'll use what I've got though. Top hive, top of the hive. Okay, so we'll fill it up here. I'm gonna fill it up about halfway. So valuable having a tank. Oof, saves me a lot of hassles. So we've made it downright hospitable for these ladies. We've got, I like the inner cover. I use inner covers uh, with the notch down. I just like them like that. So they have a little bit of breathing room. And then in the summertime, I'll put the, put the prop it up like that so they can get in and out there. Winter, like that. So we'll set them up. I start them on the ground. They lived on the ground. They started on the ground. So and I just use an inner cover to put them out front here. Okay, so this is your new home, ladies. I'm gonna throw my veil on. I'm not proud. Um, when I dump bees, they kinda, they'll fly everywhere. Um, I can live without gloves because they'll probably not be that feisty, but we'll find out. This is also our opportunity to find the queen. So um, I'm gonna dump them in here. There's all kinds of good resources in here. They should crawl right in. Hopefully they, they do as they're told. So you ready? And we're going to be looking for a queen. A lot of bees, so the quite a lot of bees. A lot of times the queen is in that lid. And they're running right in. That's a real nice that's a real nice sign. So many drones in this hive that it's hard to see the queen, if there is one even. And now I'm gonna do the big dump. Lots of particles and crap. I keep seeing queens, but they're drones. Big fat drones. We're looking for the queen. See, they're pretty mellow. They don't have anything to guard, so they're just flying around. Boy, I'd love to see a nice big fat queen go waddling in there. Drones, drones, drones. So it makes my day when I do find the queen in these kind of situations. It's a good sign that they're running in, though. They are habituating, getting used to this box, and that's a good sign. They're hanging on. I brush them down in so that they uh, have a chance to crawl in. They got to figure that box out. All right, so that's a bee removal. Um, our our movement here has excited up the old bee yard. There's lots of bees. These are all robbers and foragers. We put some comb out for them, and then there's a new hive, and there's all and the bee mobile smells like goodness. So it attracted a lot of bees. But as you can see, they're just flying around. They're not they're not interested in hurting anybody. Um, Disappointing removal in a way, but we also uh, got a bunch of bees out of a tough situation and uh, we're gonna see, I didn't see a queen. So I'm gonna probably have to merge those with another colony, but uh, they went right in the box. So they'll they'll hive up, we'll see how they behave. And then like I said, probably mix them with another colony. So bee removal is like the shortest course in learning how to be a good beekeeper because you get to see bees in the wild. You get to see bees doing their thing the way they want to do it. So you really see where the, the honey is on top. That's what's attached to the thing they're hanging from and how they build their comb and uh, how the brood, brood ball, right? The brood chamber is the same no matter what they're doing. So um, never ceases to amaze me what the bees do and doing removals is, a, is kind of a glimpse into the way they want to do it so that out here in the apiary we can kind of replicate that. So I'd like to take y'all on another removal with my good friend Suzanne. Suzanne is a brand new beekeeper through the Hives for Heroes program, an awesome program that connects beekeepers and 
military vets. It's, it's, it's a national program. Anyway, so we've got bees in a bird's nest up on high. And what we're going to do is lower this nest, the bird house, and we're going to get in there and get after these bees. We're going to meet them with a little bit of smoke here as they come down. Smoke just confuses their senses, calms them down a little bit. With wild bees, you just never know what you're going to get into. Are they going to be Africanized? Are they going to be nasty, big, mean hive? We don't know how big this hive is. We're going to find out here in just a second. So Suzanne's smoking. We are going to pry it open. So it looks like they're just in inhabiting this one small corner of the hive. And so we're going to be able to get to them, smoking them up. That's sort of knocking on their door. They are bearding out, coming out and checking us out. And so first step is to reduce numbers. So Susan is going to get in there. Suzanne is going to get in there with the vac and just get those guard bees and flyers and the first bees that are going to rush out. So on a bigger hive, I'll even spend a, just a long time just reducing those numbers. Uh, means that, that the hive is more mellow as we uh, capture the more aggressive members and the, 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 the ones whose job it is to defend the hive. So one bee at a time, just vacuuming them up. A low pressure vacuum doesn't kill them or hurt them. And uh, it's actually kind of fun. If you've done it as long as I have, it gets a little bit tedious, but it's still fun. So now we got to get in there and get after the bees. As a bee removal pro, that's really the toughest thing typically. It's not the bees themselves, although they can be pretty tough to work with or aggressive, especially if they're that Africanized feral genetic we get here in New Braunfels. But really the challenge is getting to them and uh, sometimes having to do demolition. Here we're going to be able to take this birdhouse apart. It's meant to do that. Um, it's got sort of spring-loaded and hangs and so we're going to kind of work with what we got. We have to pry it open. Suzanne's using her hive tool to pry it open. Oops, she dropped it. That's okay. And then we're going to push, push it up. We've got some blocks we're going to use to uh, prop it up. Um, I've got this big uh, 12, 2 by 10 or 2 by 12 here I'm going to get after. That's going to be a useful tool, but um, it's a little cumbersome. These bees are hanging down in the inside of that one section of this birdhouse. So here we go with some 2 by's. Not working that great. So uh, again, the challenge typically is getting to the bees. Um, this is less challenging. And there I kind of knocked all the comb off. Not a, not a great maneuver, but that'll happen. Um, the hive is kind of awkward to work with. So now we're going to give it a real go. I'm going to get this 2x10 or 2x12, whatever we got here. There's 2x12. Get that in there and really prop the hive up so we can get to work not a big hive. These are my bread and butter though. I love these kind of hives that typically get a queen and it's a great way to get started with the hive. Um, typically we'll requeen them but I'll, I'll get them established as is. So again long we spend a lot of time just vacuuming reducing numbers of bees. Being real careful not to get into the honey that will gum up the works with any, any vacuum and the bees are kind of bearding out on front. They are pretty well behaved. They're not, they're not too, too feisty. I'm able to work without gloves and we just start to kind of pick that comb apart and uh, get, get them out. So let's see what we got in here. I got a lobe of comb. Oop, maybe got a little sting. That's gonna happen if you're stupid enough to put your hand in the beehive without gloves on. Suzanne continues to work it, again, reducing those numbers out in front of the colony. And then we really just pick it apart. We do have queen clips at the ready if we do find the queen. I usually do find the queen in a small colony like this. So Suzanne is doing a great job very gently uh, holding that comb and vacuuming bees and looking for that queen as she goes. 
So this is a first time bee remover and she is doing just great. Fearless. Uh, I, I asked her if she was nervous and she said she trusts her equipment, which, uh, which makes a lot of sense. You get good equipment, protective gear. So here she is getting those good nurse bees. Those, those are the bees we want. They're the bees who are going to tend to uh, new brood, the old brood that we give them, and then any new eggs that uh, the potential queen is going to lay. So really work hard to get a lot of those good nurse bees because those are, those are money. Those are definitely money. Queen hunting as we go. You got to have those good queen eyes. We both got our readers on looking for that queen. These feral Africanized bees to typically the queens run. So quite often I see more than the apiary queens I'll purchase. These Africanized queens will run to the dark. Uh, and sometimes they're the last one I'll find in the bottom of a colony. So we're just cautiously pulling out one lobe of comb at a time. And uh, there's a little bit of honey in there. We're going to give a little bit of the honey to the client. That's always fun. So here we're going to make our frames and typically I make just two or three depending on how, how big the hive and this is a small hive so Suzanne's just jumping right in and si sizing that comb into the frame it's almost like the bees knew what size we needed because the, the brood comb was just the perfect fit and that'll hold in there real nicely the bees will attach it and work it right away there's there's both open cells and capped brood so it gives them a lot to work with. In fact, if they don't have a queen, they, they might even find an egg that they can go and try to make their own queen. So now it's just getting things cleaned up. We do get into circumstances with robber bees at this point. So sometimes when we're removing bees, it's not just the bees from that colony, it's bees from other hives. So law of diminishing returns applies here where it's it just doesn't make much sense. We do want to get as much stuff cleaned out. That's just the messy work. I've got a pail down there. I'm just getting as much comb out as possible and getting things cleaned up. We're just about there. Uh, it is messy work. <laughs> the suits do get a lot of gunk on them. But here's Suzanne just uh, catching one bee at a time. Again, here Suzanne is cleaning up these last bits of bees. These could be robbers from other hives, but it uh, doesn't hurt to get as many bees as we can get. She is an absolute natural. I've worked with a lot of people and a lot of new beekeepers, and Suzanne has just jumped in with both feet. So here we are finishing off the job. Um, the bees are going to ball up a little bit on that top of that pole, unfortunately, because we've moved their original hive location, you know, 15 feet down. So uh, we might have a ball of bees, and I typically come back and just check. Um, but we're, we're just looking for one bee at a time, getting ready to wrap this one up and then head out to the apiary. So here we are in the apiary. We are going to make it downright hospitable for these bees. Again, I've got a box full of drawn out, some drawn-out comb, maybe some foundation. I bring them a full feeder of nectar sugar water and then we're going to uh, bring them their good frames that we've made uh, frames with their own brood comb in it and here's the bees I'm actually going to mix these with some bees from another removal as well so here we are giving them their good brood comb and they'll like that these are nice frames to give them so I used to spend a lot of time attaching them, and like I said, it doesn't hurt to use rubber bands, but I find if I just place them in there nice and tight, the bees will, in fact, work quickly to attach that comb. And I do give them a top where there's a little top egress. I like to give them that top egress. These are real flighty bees. So here they are coming out of the back, and they're just taken to the air pretty quickly. So, uh, but. This is, again, our opportunity to find that queen, so we get to dump them. This is just fun. It's the end of a long day, you know, hard work, and you get to uh, see your bees. Unfortunately, we didn't find the queen when we were working, but here, a lot of times, is a good chance to find her. Uh, but both these removals, we didn't see a queen 
Um, we're going to find out if there is a queen in a couple days. That's all it takes. But we're looking for her. And it's a good sign the way they're balling up in front of the entrance and, and finding their way in. Thought we had a queen, looks like a drone. And next thing we'll do is just kind of dump all the bees off of that. It's actually a bottom board out front. Just dump all those bees right in front, let them figure it out. And hopefully they hive up, stay. Uh, if they are not queen right, we can mix them with another column. But bee removal, great way to build your apiary and a lot of fun. So thanks for tagging along, y'all. I hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, happy beekeeping.